Hello friends, I, I want us to try something here. I want us to enter into the story with the disciples when Jesus is interacting with the Samaritan woman. Now, to do this, we've got to step back in time, go put on your bathrobe, not really, but like go enter into the story and be one of the disciples and try to understand the story a little different. So first, we've come from a very religious Jewish family, places like Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum places where ritual purity is everything, so much so that you've never even stepped foot in Samaria. But more importantly, you have found the Jewish Messiah. You have found the Christ. You've been able to walk with him as a group, as disciples. We've been able to interact and talk with him. But today's different. Today, this Jewish Messiah is in Samaria, talking to a woman, a Samaritan woman. Unbeknownst to you, your world is about ready to get flipped upside down. You're going to come to realize that this Jewish Messiah is, is different. There's something happening here that's far bigger than you have ever imagined. I want you to take a listen to this teaching and see if you would respond the same way the disciples did. Or would you understand what Christ is really trying to do in this world? Take a listen. Every story, there's two sides. Prodigal son, one son separated from the father because he sold everything. The elder son separate because he just doesn't want to agree with what the father is doing. In this story, we see the disciples and the woman in our third, a third dialogue. His disciples go into town to get food. Don't underestimate how difficult that would be for a Jewish group to go into a Samaritan town to buy food. It's walk into an Egyptian bazaar and try to haggle with somebody. $10, $10, $10, $10. No, it's 20 for you. It's going to be 20 for you. <laughs> and they come walking out of town, thankful that they were able to stay ritually pure. They hand the stuff off, left it on a the table. They didn't have to touch anything. And they see the Messiah talking to somebody. And he's talking to a woman. And she's Samaritan in broad daylight. Now, if you're a disciple of a rabbi, first thing going through your mind is like, nobody better see what he's just doing. If the parashim see what he's doing right now, it's going to get really ugly. They could drag him before the Sanhedrin, throw him into jail. This is a serious offense. Protect the rabbi at all costs. Women, I don't care. Samaritan, absolutely not. Protect the rabbi. He has to remain pure. But, I love it. They want to say something, but they says that they don't say. <laughs> I love that. They're thinking, but no, 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 no. They'd say, no, remember what we're supposed to be doing? We were supposed to go get the food. Rabbi, eat something. And he responds and says, but I have food that you know nothing about. What? Do you realize what we just had to go do? We were doing what you wanted. We had to go get food for you. We had to go into that Samaritan village over there. That's a sinful village. We almost got impure because of that. Do you realize how hard it was for us to get the right food? They didn't want to sell it to us. And you got food. You ordered DoorDash. Delivery? Really? And he's like, wait a minute. No, no, no. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months into harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. It's so easy as a disciple of Jesus to condemn those around us that are having God move, but they're not a part of us. Those people? You revealed yourself to those people? He's like, guys, open your eyes. The field is ripe unto harvest. I'm not just come to the Jews. I didn't come just for the men. All are equal. All has, can be saved. Closing thought. This is me just thinking. What happened to this woman? I think, number one, she was no longer referred to as the man with five husbands. I think she now is the one who brought us the Messiah. He showed us the Messiah. It's not in who we are. It's not in what we've done. All we have to do is say, this man is the Messiah. And then our message becomes, come and see the man. The one who's not here to condemn, but is here to seek and to save that which is lost. Every story, there's two sides. Son separated from the father because he sold everything. The elder son separated.